First thing you're going to need are your pattern pieces, of course, already cut out. If you have a shell and lining, be sure you have that cut. You'll need some weights, um, boning, horse hair, tailor's chalk, just in case you have to mark some notches. Uh, of course, your lining and shell fabric for the body of the garment and the skirt, invisible zipper, scissors, hook and eyes, just in case. And of course, you need pens. The very first thing you are going to create is the shawl. My overall measurement was 60 inches by 13. I measured from my waist around my arm, my back, the other arm and back down to waist. And that's how I was able to obtain that measurement. Once you've cut that strip out, go ahead and sew it at a quarter of an inch. You will turn it inside out, iron it, sew it back down again so that you have your French seam. The next thing we are going to do is add the pleats onto the shawl. As you can see, I just made basic pleats and I sewed it like an L shape just so that it wouldn't open all the way. I didn't want to have to tack it down, which I still end up having to anyway, but at least this holds the pleat in place without like excessive tacking. <laughs> but anyway, the first thing you're going to do is fold your material over. I went ahead and I folded it one and a half. And then from there, you sew a half an inch and then make this L shape. The second one and third one, both will be at an inch fold over. Make sure when you are pivoting your stitch to close in that pleat when you're making that l shape you are stopping at the same stopping point as you did with your previous pleat to counteract that what i did was i started at the end of the pleat i started at the end of the pleat so i went ahead and i backstitched that l and then from there i pivoted around the corner and sewed the rest of the pleat down to the raw edge this may be able to help if you are not able to estimate exactly where you should be if you were going the opposite way. Now that the shawl is complete, the next thing to do is to attach it to the bodice of the dress. Because I was using uh, chiffon fabric, I had to stabilize the chiffon to a lining fabric first before I can even attach it to the actual lining. So if you're just using a regular solid material and you don't need a stabilizer underneath it, then you can just skip this part. <laughs> Next part would be to attach the bodice together. So we're gonna leave the side seam open for us to leave the side seam open, what we're gonna have to do is sew center front to side front, center back to side back, leaving all of our side seam open. So the side back to side front will remain unsewn. We have everything sewn. The next thing to do would be to iron it out. Now I do have three pieces, which I think I might create a new video for how to put, um, a bodice strapless bodice with boning up I think that might be a good idea because there's a lot to talk about here um, but I do have three pieces I have one for the insert of the actual boning the shell and then I have the lining which will be touching my body make sure you iron everything out and pay close attention to which way your seam allowance is going if it's the insert make sure that your casing which is your seam allowance should be facing the same direction on both sides your lining seam allowance should be ironed open along with the shell which also should be ironed open once complete you are ready to sew your side seam go ahead and sew your lining together and then you can sew your insert together but for the shell you will have to attach the shawl before you sew your side seam. When I originally cut out the shawl, I simply gave it a straight edge. It was a full rectangle, but now that we are attaching it to the side front, it needs to be at an angle because the shawl is not going from straight across 
the waistline. It's actually going up towards the center front, uh, towards the bust line. So we have to put it at an angle. So once you pin it, you can work your way around the shawl to make sure that it's facing the same direction. And then just trim off the excess. Attach your side back, which should have already been sewn to your center back together. And then from there, you can complete that side seam. Right now would be a good time for you to put it on the dress form, take a look, make sure everything is fitting properly. Majority of your vertical stitches for the bodice should be complete at this point. The next thing we need to do is make sure that our seam allowance is sewn down on the insert so that we can create the casing for the boning. If you are like me and tend to wave when you are sewing a bit, you can grab your boning and just position it right in front of your presser foot just so that you can see a good indication on where your stitch line, your previous stitch line for the seam allowance should be. Once you place it, you can pinpoint exactly where you need to sew so that you don't waver during your sewing and you're not making a casing that is too small for your boning. Once it's complete, grab your insert in the shell of the fabric. This time you are going to make your first horizontal stitch and it's gonna be at the neckline. We need to sew them together. So make sure that you line up all of your seams together, your side front, center front, side seam, along with side back. Line them all up so that you are ready to sew. Use as many pins as possible. Sometimes with the curvature of the neckline, it has a tendency of uh, buckling a little bit. So take your time when you are sewing. I did sew the center back seam for the insert in the shell together. I just went ahead and I sewed it up as one. Then I went ahead and I added some bias tape when turning to the actual neckline. The bias tape is there to just reinforce that neckline to strengthen it. Not only that, it helps for when you're wearing it too. That way the boning doesn't poke. It just adds another layer of protection. Um, you don't have to do this step. This is just something that I always do when I am creating a strapless bodice. We are almost done, looking really, really good. I am very proud of myself so far. And if you are doing it too, I hope you are as well. The next thing we're gonna do is measure out our uh, boning. We need to measure those seam allowances for the center front, side front. Well, there isn't a seam in the center front, but side front, side seam, side back seam. Once we measure it, we can cut out our boning. Make sure to smooth out that boning so that it'll fit in there nice and smooth and there aren't any rough edges because it will puncture through the fabric and that can hurt the person that you're making it for. So, Here is another tidbit. Usually when you get your boning, it will come in a roll. So that means that that boning is already forced and um, preset to go towards one direction. It's curving towards one direction. We want that curvature to be curving towards our body. Therefore, make sure that you insert it the proper way, right? If it's curving towards you during in the bust line, then that's how we should be going. Like, don't make it go the opposite direction. And then you're having to remold it to do what it hasn't been doing since it's been in packaging, all right? Just work with what you have. So, now that that's done, the next thing to do is to attach the lining. Of course, always remember, it's gonna be right side to right side, and then we sew on the wrong side. Just like we did before, we will pin our 
seams together just so that we have a better indication of what goes where. Once you pin it in place, you go ahead and you sew all the way across. This time we are not going to go down towards the center back because if we do that, then we won't be able to add a closure. So be sure to leave the center back open and you're simply going to go horizontally across the neckline. You can turn it inside out to see how it's looking. Try to smooth it out with your fingers. You can finger press those seams open for now. We are going to edge stitch right on the edge of that. But before we do so, we need to clip the center front corner exactly where that heart is being shaped. We have to trim it down. Trim all the way down to where the stitch line is without cutting the stitch. Excuse me, I accidentally went off camera, but you know what I mean because I've shown something similar to that effect before. So be sure to trim it all the way down to the stitch line and then from there you can smooth out anything that is too bulky, but from that point you would be able to edge stitch. We are edge stitching on the lining which means your seam allowance for the shell along with the insert would be shifted over to the lining and we'll sew right on top of that all the way down now when you get to the corner where the heart is you will have to back stitch and stop there start on the other corner and then continue going and guess what we will be ironing again for the ones who hate ironing <laughs> uh, take your bodice over to the ironing board iron out that bodice that neckline make sure that it's laying down smoothly shift the boning out of the way if need be but um just definitely make sure that it's laying down smoothly and then you could take it on your dress form again to make sure that it's fitting properly and everything is sitting exactly where it should. If there's anything else that you wanted to add to your bodice, such as label, like a care label, your logo, your name tag, and so forth, right now would be the best time to do so since we have not closed it fully. Once you have added everything that you wanted to add to the lining, then we can actually go ahead and tack the seam allowance down. Um, the seams needs to be tacked down through and through so that you can secure the shell to the insert to the actual lining. You are working from the inside of the garment so be sure that your knots actually end in the inside and you don't have any knots hanging out on the outside. And also make sure you have matching color because nobody want to see the tacks. So go ahead and tack down every seam. Make sure when you are tacking it down, you are moving that lining so that the edge stitch that you created is falling in place and it's not rolling over onto the wrong side. You don't want to be able to see your lining over on the right side of the fabric, over on the shell. Um, you just want to be able to see the shell so the tack will help you so that you keep that lining in place and that it rolls over properly. Every seam gets one tack with the exception of the side front and center front seam. That princess seam, I usually add two tacks to it. One above the bust line and one beneath it. Whew, we are almost done. Okay, so I went ahead and I added some inseam pockets and I also binded the raw edge. I guess that's how you'd say it, binded <laughs> with the raw edge of the seam allowance just so that it wouldn't fray since it is a very light chiffon in the lining oh my goodness the lining frays just as bad as the shell fabric uh, so now that that's done right i'm gonna go ahead and do my gathers so that i can attach the waistline to the bodice itself there is another video on how to complete an inseam pocket so I'll be sure to jot that down below in the links. There's also another video on how to gather. 
which I'll also add that down below. Once you gather it, the next thing to do is to attach the body of the skirt to your bodice. You are going to do, again, right side to right side, and you can actually sew it so that your shell gets attached to the body of the skirt. Your lining and the shell of the skirt, they should all be together as one anyway. So you're simply going to use your pens and whatever you have in order to attach it. I know that sometimes people like to use clips. I don't like to use them. I just like to use regular pens. Um, but whatever you like to use, go ahead and do that and just sew it straight across. Now remember, before you sew it across, make sure that your boning is in place. You have to make sure that you keep your seam allowance so that you don't sew over that boning. It has to go, your stitch line has to go right beneath it just so that it can keep it in place but at the same time without stitching over it. This is what it should look like when you are done. And from there, you can clean off your center back seam in preparation for your invisible zipper. For more details on the invisible zipper, there will be a link again down below on how to put it together. So definitely check out those links when you get a chance. It goes into extremely clear details on how to put the invisible zipper together. One thing I will mention though is to make sure that you are lining up the waistline. But I'm your liability. Once your zipper is sewn, the next thing that is to do is to close out your lining. Everything should be pretty much done before you close out your lining. Go ahead and get a ton of pins and just pin across that waistline. You're going to fold that seam allowance inwards and we're gonna hand sew. For where the zipper is, you'll fold the zipper inward so that your seam allowance is tucked into the fabric and hidden, of course. And then for the top of the zipper, you're going to fold it down and in. The portion of the material that is edge stitch where the lining is should be rolling over slightly to the point that the shell fabric should be hovering over right just like an edge stitch it's supposed to be rolling over your lining should not be showing on the outside of the garment continue to do that for do that for both sides make sure that your material is covering everything that it needs to cover and make sure that it's tucked in so fold and take your time so that it goes into place once you're done pinning you can base stitch where the zipper is and then just double check to make sure that the zipper is lining up before you start hand sewing All right, blind hemming or blind sewing. Anyway, it's pretty much just a ladder stitch. You wanna go ahead and start with your hook and eye. You guys, you should seriously use a thimble. Now that I'm watching this video, every time I go through the fabric, I'm like clenching because I'm thinking the needle is going to go through my finger. Just use a thimble so that you don't have any panic attacks like I'm having right now, revising the video. Um, <laughs> but once you have the hook and eye in place, then you can go ahead and just make like a ladder stitch all the way down the side of the zipper. Every five stitches or so, you should lock it. So make a knot so that it locks. Make sure that the knot is in between the fabric and it's not actually on the outside where it's going to show. Take your time with this, put on a movie, put on a podcast or something, and just take your time with it because this is the closing part. Once you close the garment, um, you're pretty much done. From there, you just have to hem. You guys already know how to hem, so I'm not going to show all of that. <laughs> but let me show you guys an overall view on how the garment looks. 
Y'all see that? It is so clean, so pretty. Yes, 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 yes. Clean and pretty. I love for the inside to look as good as the outside. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's wrap it up for today. Go ahead and hem. I did not add horse hair to the hemming, um, only because I pretty much got tired of working on this dress. And <laughs> make sure you tack the shawl at the, um, at the neckline. Tack, <laughs> be sure to tack your shawl at the neckline just so that it could stay in place. If you have not subscribed to this channel, definitely do so. I hope you like what you see. Check out my Instagram. I will be posting how to, well, more details on how to create this garment via um, posts, just regular posts on my Instagram. So you should be able to see some more details on there. Uh, just because I didn't want to keep this video going for 30 minutes long. Here are some images. I did end up wearing this garment to a wedding that I was invited to. And it was funny because when I got there, it was all white and I kind of panicked because here I was in this red dress in like an all white room. It was, <laughs> I freaked out a little bit, but um, it wasn't an all white affair. So uh, beautiful setup, but yeah, anyway. If you have not subscribed to the channel, definitely do so. Like, share, and comment below. If you have any questions at all, I will be more than happy to answer. And I will see you next time. Happy sewing! Bye!